hello YouTube. Um, this is Infernator One. I'm, uh, I'm here trying to make a video. Uh, I don't know if I'm up to it, but I'm gonna try to cram it all in. It's a lot of stuff. Um, I'm trying to make a video about uh, that the the Holy Sacrament or whatever you want to call it, the way Jesus termed it was being reborn again was actually from another religion. Um, from what I know, it traces back to the Egyptians, um, like Alexandria, where they had the the Alexandria um, Library, where they would uh, borrow books from other uh, cultures, and they give it give it back to them as as they copied it. So uh, back then, religion was free. You know, it was more free. Now the the, the uh, overlords, which I call the archons or the flyers or the demons that possess people, they're interdimensional. Or sometimes they even call them the clockwork elves. Uh, they're, they've been called many things by different cultures. Um, they possess people at the top, the royalty. The royalty are, are vessels for these beings because they're uh, degraded beings. They're special lineage uh, bloodline. Uh, I think they're from the Jewish bloodline. 12 tribes of Jacob and they're very highly possessable the thing is that that's how they consolidate us and control us from off-world through their uh, royal bloodline that's why they have to intermarry it's not really that they have uh, psychic powers or more like that they get possessed um, which we see in a lot of other cases in, in history but uh, I don't want to get away from there I'm gonna also make another video on uh, the um, nectar of the gods and the ambrosia so those are going to be that's going to be another video set which i've pretty much i i've kind of discovered what it is and i can't say for sure but i i'm pretty sure i know what it is <laughs> um this video basically this there's a book you can get this book in amazon there's a lot of places you can get this book it also comes out on kindle for 10.99 uh this alludes to the fact that uh, throughout history, I can even read you the uh, synopsis. Reveals a secret teaching from, from the Judeo-Christian traditions that promote the use of psychedelic substances to enhance religious transcendence. Explains how meditation were designed to be performed while par uh, partaking of the psych psychedelic sacrament. You see, uh, Jesus in the Bible, in the New Testament even tells you, I think it's the New Testament, to go into a closet and... Um, and pray. Pray is just another word for medit meditate. It's not really pray to God. The problem with religion nowadays, it's been taken over by, like I've said, the Archon and the Archon royalty. They actually devise it along with so many, throughout thousands of years, they've, they've implemented uh, different uh, stories in there. And of course, we all know the, the heart pulling string uh, stories from, or the parables from uh, King James and his his lackey, um, uh, what's his name? Um, greatest literary writer of all time was, uh, God damn, I can't remember his name. Um, I'll just, I'll get back to that. Anyways, uh, being reborn, like he told, um, uh, what's his name? Nicodemus. Nicodemus telling him, "How can you go back into your mother's womb and be re reborn again?" And that's that's ironic because when you're in the womb, you're being hit with DMT. You're being hit with DMT up to about the sixth or seventh week, just like they alluded to in the movie. Uh, um, but they call it a CPH four, or something like that, in the movie um, uh, Lucy. And it, and, it, and it makes you uh, develop all your organs, brains, nerves, and everything uh, at a higher rate. You're in the womb in the water, and water is holy. Actually, it's water that is so holy. It is diametric, uh, diamagnetic and dielectric. I think it's even dielectric. So these ley lines where these pyramids are placed over are, in fact, uh, underground streams cr crisscrossing. They're not one way. They're, they're going east and East to south and north north to east. I mean north to north to south, east to west. That's crazy, right? Um, so let me read this. 
The mystery of Mana religious historian Dan Merger provided compelling evidence that the miraculous bread that God fed the Israelites in the wilderness was psychedelic, made from bread containing ergot, the psych uh, psychoactive fungus containing the same chemicals from which LSD is made. And that's exactly where it was found initially, you know, that it came from bread. Uh, the bread was, was uh, what was the bread called? Uh, God, I forget, I'm forgetting so many things, because I haven't been up to date on all this. I, I need to visit it every once in a while. It's, it's uh, show, sh show bread, shoe bread. Yeah, it's shoe bread. Uh, apparently, the Jews pretend they don't know how to make it anymore, but uh, it's ergot, which is a, a fungus that, 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 that attacks grasses and, you know, not attacks them, but, you know, you find them in those. A lot of grains and grasses, and uh, rye is one of them. Many religious authorities over the centuries have secretly known the identity and experience of manna and have left a rich record of their involvement with the sacred substance. Also, when... Um, uh, there's been a lot of uh, fly agaric, which is the same one used in Alice in Wonderland, which you see a lot in the pictures of the one that Santa Claus is personified as, um, or he personifies the mushroom. Um, the thing with that is that you take this substance, you go into a pyramid, which is limestone mica, you know, it's one side has to be pointing a magnetic north, meaning the, the flat side, not, not the corners and you go into a sarcophagus with water and then you're in there for three days that is exactly what this book uh, tells you that uh, Christianity is based upon uh, so many other religions pagan uh, uh, and uh, mystery schools and some of these are to heal you because that's that's what would heal you you actually go into inter to another dimension uh, or you get other dimensional energies go through your body and so forth you Heal your body. The uh, even the Romans had uh, dark rooms where you'd go in there and uh, stay there for three days and get healed of whatever problem you had. Uh, science has even proven. I could even show you the uh, the sites that twelve days of darkness can can in fact uh, have healing properties. I don't know if it'll completely heal something, but you have to be in there twelve days because twelve days is actually the bare minimum for DMT production. Um, or you can take also DMT ayahuasca with an MAOI. But uh, I like to allude to the fact that also a lot of this was used throughout in the Bible. It's very coded. Uh, like when John was on the, uh, John, a disciple of Jesus, was on the island of Patmos, he took a scroll which basically was given to him by an angel, which is uh, also a mushroom because of the way it was described. It was bitter to the uh, stomach, sweet to the taste, and that was because they were mushrooms were put in uh, stored in honey in those days so it f fits the uh, a, a, the uh, description of how they stored mushrooms aside from that like I've said uh, I've said many times a lot of people fight me on this but the times that the disciples wrote the Bible supposedly ha was moved uh, from 250 AD then another two times finally it, it was agreed upon at 70 AD and at 70 AD, if they were 25, 30 years old when they met Jesus, that would have made them about 100 years old at 70 AD. Uh, but it, you notice that 250 AD kind of corresponds to the Council of Nicaea, where Constantine uh, did, in fact, uh, group around a thousand pagan religions. Uh, actually, there was two Council of Nicaea, but uh, in that one, he he uh, worked out. Uh, the uh, religion, uh, the universal religion, he worked it out and uh, filed it out with all these other other pagans, so they could add their little bit of religion, and all their followers would be content with those those little uh, sacraments that they have within each religion, uh, rituals or ceremonial uh, you know, picadillos. So what we're trying to say here is that Christianity, uh, there was no real Jesus, in fact. Unless this is a beyond elaborate chest thing, uh, you know, I don't believe it is. Because uh, if you put one man in charge, which I believe are the demons right now, they're, they were fighting Jesus supposedly in the uh, temple, those uh, Pharisees were actually demon possessed. Um, you can read it by what he says. Um, I believe that these demon. Uh, archons, monarchs, 
are trying to get away from the direct contact to the ether, the uh, astral plane, the plane with high energy that that uh, that where all thought exists. In fact, our thoughts come from there, and if we do not go and visit there when we dream or sleep, we do not uh, either regenerate or have thought, because that's what gives life. That's the spark. That's the divine spark. Now the archons are trying to get in front of that and 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 try to take over religions, and they have, but now religion is kind of losing favor because there's nothing there. There's no promise that God is going to give you. Uh, and, I mean, there's so many flaws. It's absurd. It's beyond absurd because, I mean, a perfect God does not uh, use bargaining chips. If he's, He doesn't need us. He doesn't say he doesn't need us. Why do they even have to use the extortion of hell and the blackmail of heaven, as I've termed so many times? Um, let me read the rest of it. In the Psychedelic Sacrament, a, a companion work to the mystery of manna, which was also like uh, mushrooms falling from the sky. We all know that mushrooms can develop overnight. Dan Merka elucidates a body of Jewish and Christian writing especially devoted to this tradition of ver visionary mysticism. He discusses the specific teaching of Philo of Le Alexandria, Rabbi Moses, Mammonidos, Nides, and St. Bernard of Clairvox that referred to special meditation designed to be performed while partaking of the psychedelic sacrament, which means emptying out your mind, mostly, I think. I have to buy this book, actually. I only read excerpts where you get in the uh, sarco sarcophagus. It's just, sarcophagus is like a square block that's hollow in the middle, and then if it has water in it, and then they put like a, they put a little top on it. So you're there for a long time, and, and you're actually tripping out in, in there. You're going deeper into your mind, or you're basically, um, what would you call, um, balancing your right and left hemisphere brains equally, so they, they talk to each other. And then you, you start to uh, go into dimensions. Because your brain is that. It's all, that's all it is. It's an interdimensional thing, other than a computer that uh, maintains your body and has thoughts and expressions. Okay, here it is. Let me read it. These meditations combine the relative, re, revelatory power of psychedelics with a rational exercise of the mind, enabling the seeker to achieve a qualitative, qualitatively enhanced state of religious transcendence. The psychedelic sacrament sheds new light on the use of psychedelics in the Western mystery tradition and deepens our understandings of the human desire for divine union. Exactly. In other words, the archons have always tried to keep us from this uh, ascension, uh, whether we truly become ascension, ascend, uh, ascend, 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 sentient beings or not, I, I don't know. But we will live a bit longer, and they've always, they're always trying to kill us off quicker. Uh, absolutely, you know. They're the ones that have, have uh, created abortion and all these other things and cancers. and oh, It's just endless. I can't even go into it. It's just so, so big. Anyways, I better taper off this this uh, video. I, I hope you all can understand what I'm trying to get to here is that religion is not controlled by good uh, hierarchy. It's controlled by evil. And it, and if you see that in the Bible that the, the God of the old, OT is brutal because that is actually uh, an archon, the, the main archon, the Demiurge, who is... Uh, always showing up and asking for sacrifice but at the, at the other end of that it's always telling us that we our best works are are terrible they're rags and that we cannot be on our own uh, we have to be dependent just the way the democrats i hate to put po politics in there's just politics in here but the democrats always want they do never want us they never want us to be empowered imagine that if, if their people got everything what they wanted and then they started they they found them a job and everything no you got to keep them dependent and the bible does that it says you need jesus and jesus is nothing more than one of their uh tricks their men their men in black you know cloaked with a garment of, of a you know of a goat or sheep or whatever you want to call it a, a lamb and uh it's a trick to give over your soul to them so any of you who have given your soul have to renounce it 
because it's a trick. Anyways, this is what these religions were back when they empowered the humankind, human, the human race to become uh, independent, powerful, sentient, understanding of, of, of truth, logical, emotional as well, everything. In fact, uh, but you could deduce a lot quicker. You could be, you know, have an IQ of 200 maybe if you could do this uh, meditation all the time. The pyramid does have to be pointing not the edges, the sides, to true north. You would have to have a sarcophagus in there, you know, or, or at least a water thing. That's where all this, like a fringe where, they're, where, where they get in a steel tank, uh, water with a lot of uh, Epsom salt to make you float, or Stranger Things where, you're, where the girl takes LSD. In both instances, they both take LSD. So the Jews have been doing this for a long, long time. And you can see that they're very, very smart people. They are actually smarter than the Germans and uh, all the other races, Indians, everybody, because they are in control of everything. Uh, they do this by having other people utilizing their powers, their gifts, just like Hollywood does with people with gifts to act. Uh, the United States uses, because it's controlled by the Jews, uh, uses other people from other countries, uh, their geniuses, to make, uh, you know, military products, uh, anything, you know, like uh, any kind of electronic products, electronic products. So basically they use this by, by enslaving uh, the smart people and making them do their bidding, just like we see in the movie uh, Star Wars, where the emperor utilizes everybody's abilities. See, that's the smartest thing you could ever do. You don't get stupid people to work for you. You get the smartest people in the world and you become the, the greatest empire there can be. Anyways, I've kind of let it get away from me, but this is this book, I'm definitely going to get it. I only read a few excerpts. Um, this is basically what Jesus was talking about, the uh, resurrection. And um, I think people need to start looking into these things because... We are being, uh, you know, hoodwinked and hogtied, ham-fisted, knocked over the head, told to do this, this and that, when we don't understand why. What we need to do is expand our, our knowledge base, and then we'll understand why. We'll understand everything. It's like when somebody gives you a command, but they don't tell you why you're doing it. You need to know the details. You need to know why people why churches don't give you anything they just tell you to get down on your knees and follow and don't ask any questions um, so that's all I'm gonna leave with y'all I hope you all take my advice expand your knowledge base be worldly don't be uh, you know get that uh, narrow vision tunnel vision Infonator out thank you <laughs>